Hey, what's up, shitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the Vitalin U3. Currently listed at $799, but go ahead and check the link in the description of this video for the current pricing, as well as any discounts I have available, I'll put there as well. Anyways, guys, I feel like that's enough small talk, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox this thing, we're gonna go over all the specs and features, and we're gonna do the fun part, which is take it out for a ride. What do you say we get started? Come on, let's go. Let's get to unboxing this bad boy. This comes in a nice small box, much smaller than the typical e-bike I'm used to unboxing. Get the seat separately. It's probably the charger, this bike toolkit. There we go. Now it's time to get snipping. Favorite part. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this battery. You need to put, insert the key. Put it in the unlock position and you can remove it out of here. So I'm going to remove this so I can start charging. Box of accessories here. We got our pedals. Ooh, it looks like a little air pump. Bag full of tools here. Reflectors for the tire. A handy dandy user's manual. Put on these head handlebars. So this folds and that reveals this Allen nut here that needs to be tightened. Make sure it's lined up with your front fork. And we got our head handlebars on. Go ahead and put on our pedals here. Now keep in mind the pedals are directional. This one's for the right. And the other one is for the left. And they're always going to screw going towards the front of the bike. Last step, we're gonna put on the seat. All in all, it was a really easy install. It only took me about 20 minutes or so. It goes together really easy. And you see here, first thing I'm noticing, this bike is a lot smaller than the typical e-bike I'm used to dealing with, in a good way. A lot of these bikes are really massive. This one, I can tell, is gonna fit into a nice smaller form factor. It's gonna take up less room. Easier to fold up and bring along with you on your various adventures. I liked it so far. It's a nice small form factor. Let's go over the specs and features of this bike. So you can see the battery is still out. I have I'm currently charging it right now. So we'll start here at the rear wheel. This is a 750 watt, 1056 watt peak, brushless geared hub motor in the rear. This is paired with a seven speed Shimano drivetrain with a turny derailleur. You can see here it has a derailleur guard. This is Chaoyang 20 by three inch fat tires. Now, most of these bikes come with 20 by four inch tires. I actually like these smaller tires. Not every bike needs big four inch tires. These are gonna be lighter. They're gonna take up less space and they're gonna be good for pretty much all the same terrain. You have your rear rack here. It says max 25 kilograms, which works out to be about uh, 55 pounds. So you'll be able to put various things on here. And I believe Vitalin's website, you can buy different accessories to bolt onto this rack. Here you have your plastic pedals that we put on earlier. I actually prefer plastic pedals in some situations because the metal ones, if you miss a pedal stroke and you get yourself in the shin, you're gonna be in for a bad time. So these ones don't hurt quite as bad. This is the black color. Now they call this bike a full suspension bike, but that's really not the case. This has a suspension seat post and a front fork with suspension on it. It's not really a full suspension bike as a full suspension bike would have suspension in the rear as well. You see here the folding mechanism in the middle. I will demonstrate that how that works in a little bit later in this video. Front fork here, this is, has your basic adjustments on it. It has your compression here on the right, it has open or lock, and it has your preload adjustment here on the left. 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes front and rear. Now typically I prefer to see hydraulic disc brakes, but keep in mind this is a budget oriented bike. About 65, 66 pounds. It is extremely light compared to a lot of e-bikes which are well over 70 pounds, 80 pounds. Now Vitalin claims this bike will fit a rider between five foot three and six foot five. So this is what a six foot two rider looks like on the Vitalin U3. Put the battery back in. You notice the seat actually has a lever underneath and once you push in that lever you can pop the seat forward giving you room to slide in and out your 48 volt 13 amp hour battery and then you clamp it down from then you want to lock the seat you want to lock the battery in now the battery is locked into place you can put your seat back down and 
you're good to go with the battery. It's not the biggest battery, however, I feel with the whole motif of this bike being a folding bike, lighter, you're not going to need or want a huge battery on this bike, but I feel like with this battery, you'll probably be able to get 20 to 25 miles fairly easy. This bike comes with a 48 volt, two amp charger. So a 13 amp hour battery divided by two. This will take just over six hours from dead to full. You have the ability to charge this battery on or off of the bike. Just remove the little plastic over the charge port here, plug in your cable, and now you're charging. The U3 also comes with this front rack accessory here which you can use to then bolt on different various baskets that are available from Vitalin at extra cost. But for purposes of this review, I'm not gonna be adding this as I don't have any of the attachments. Onto the cockpit of this bike, you have these rubberized grips with offer you palm support. I really like these grips. Uh, you have wax a wig, mechanical disc brake handles. So far these feel okay, but we'll know more about that when we take it for a ride. We have your Shimano seven speed shifter that's gonna be on pretty much every single e-bike on the market. And here we have our basic control set. To turn on the bike, you wanna press the bottom button here for just a second and you'll see the nice color LCD display turns on. I've seen this display on a few different bikes. I do like it, it's nice and bright. It gives you all the basic information you need. So it has your speedometer, battery indicator, your pedal assist settings here. And if to toggle through your pedal assist, you press the plus or minus buttons here and it'll show you which pedal assist you're in. To toggle through your information settings, you press the top button on the side. You have your tripometer, odometer, max speed, and average speeds. And you just press the buttons to go through those. And if you want to turn on and off the headlights, you press the bottom button on the side and that'll turn on and off the, tail, the headlight and the tail light. And your quarter twist throttle. When the headlights are on, the tail light is always on as well as a demonstration of our turn signals here. And the U3 also comes with a horn. It's a pretty standard horn, but uh, I think it's going to get the job done. People will be able to hear you when you uh, press this bad boy out on the trails. Demonstrate the folding capability of the U3. Simply push up the tab here in the middle, open the latch. This will enable you to fold the main bike body of the bike in half. This can be a bit awkward. Now we have it folded in half. We can fold the handlebars as well. You can see here the U3 folds into this nice compact little package. Makes it easy for storage. You want to throw it in the back seat of your car or the trunk. Pretty easy to do once it's all folded up. And to fold it back out, you just do the opposite. Unfold it, clamp it up, put the latch in, get out your handlebars, clamp in. With that being said, you're ready to rock. Now we've gone over all the specs and features of the Vitalin U3. What do you say we do the fun part and go take this bad boy for a ride? Come on guys, let's get going. All right guys, we're out on the Vitalin U3. And first thing I wanted to point out is you need the key in this bike in order to ride it. So this has to be in the on position before you can turn on and off the display. I'm not a big fan of that because multiple times I forgot my key and I went to go ride and realized, oops, I gotta go back home to get my key. Nevertheless, you have to have the key in the on position to go for a ride. All right, so we're off on the Vitalin U3. We start off in pedal assist one here. And uh, pedal assist one is not giving us much power at all, as to be expected. Uh, kind of feels like I'm not getting any assistance at all on that eight miles an hour. We're gonna bump it up to two. Well, I definitely feel the nice increase in power in two. All right, so two feels like it gets us about 10 to 12 miles an hour. Up to three now. Uh, three is getting us about 16, 17, four. Ooh, four is getting us up and going. We're at 23, 22, 23 with four, and five is going to take us to the home stretch. This bike actually feels pretty powerful for a 75 Newton meter, 750 watt motor. I'm guessing that's because this bike is considerably lighter than a lot of the competition at just 65 pounds. And uh, when we're talking uh, e bikes, 65 pounds is light as a feather. Well, let's see if this thing can sting like a bee as well. I'm definitely noticing the pedal clearance to the ground is not the greatest. So I just, I can scrub the pedal if I have it in the wrong position when I take a turn. So keep that in mind. Kind of surprising, that pedal assist five did feel pretty torquey though. But I uh, typically will ride in three. Three seems to be my sweet spot on most bikes. Yeah, this bike feels nice and smooth. Nice quiet so far. Initial uh, impressions of the brakes is they feel pretty good. 
Sometimes these uh, mechanical brakes can make a lot of noise and they don't have the best grab to them, but uh, these feel strong enough and so far they aren't making noise, but we'll be checking in on that a bit later. And this does have the suspension seat post, but however, I am 245 pounds and uh, I'm finding that instead of it doing much suspension, it's just sitting at the bottom of the travel. So perhaps if you're a lighter rider, you'd get more use out of suspension seat post on this bike. But for me, it's not doing an incredible amount of work. Well, so far, this bike feels pretty smooth. A nice little cruiser. Let me go on around the back side of the restaurant here. Now, this area can be a bit tricky with some of the bikes because they want to lunge forward, but not so bad on the U3. First impressions are these 20 by three inch tires. They feel nice, it feels pretty maneuverable. So we're gonna be taking it here off road a little bit onto this gravel trail. This will be a better testament of how well these tires work. But I would anticipate, you know, 20 by three inch tires, fairly wide, it's got a knobby tread. I think you'll have no problem going over most types of terrain. I'd probably stay off of the looser stuff, you know, like sand or deeper rocks or anything where you're gonna sink in. The fatter tire, the four, four inch tires would do better than a three inch tire. So you might want to keep that in mind, but honestly, most of these bikes do not need four inch tires. So I'm okay with the three inch tires, but guys, let's see how these three inch tires do on the planks of doom. It's looking a little wet through here today. So far, we're having a nice smooth ride with these, with the Vitalin U3. I've got a dangling branch, no thorns, we're good. <laughs> Oh. You know, the smaller form factor of the U3 made easier for the past people on the Planks of Doom. Here we go, guys. Another successful trip over the Planks of Doom. Made fairly easy work of it, too. The cadence system on this bike feels pretty smooth. I'm not noticing any delays. This is a nice implementation of the cadence sensor. I rode a, a Vitalin V3, and it was the same thing. It was nice. It was smooth, no delays. The power delivery it feels uh, fairly immediate. So I'm liking that so far. Here's what you look like riding around on the U3. For me, with the pedal, this is a pretty comfortable pedal position. I'm six foot two. Uh, I'm getting adequate extension on my legs, I feel, for the types of riding we would do on a folding bike. So overall, I feel like this is a nice, comfortable riding position. You are a bit more upright on these folding bikes. It's just the nature of the game because they fold into a smaller form factor. So they don't have the widest wheelbase or the longest wheelbase, but yeah, so you sit up a little higher, but overall, I feel this is a comfortable this is a comfortable ride. For what suspension this bike does have, it seems like it's working well. And I was expecting it to be a harsher ride because the 20 by three inch fat tires, the 20 by three inch tire is not gonna have as much air volume as a 20 by four inch. Plus these are inflated to 35 PSI, but uh, it feels fine, I don't know. Maybe it's due to the lighter weight of the bike in general, but Overall, this has been a pretty pleasant ride. Maybe, maybe it's the suspension seat post. Initially, I kind of thought I was just bottoming out the suspension seat post, but it does feel like it is working. Although I do think it worked better with a lighter rider. This isn't a bad way to spend the day out on the U3. What's nice about this bike is it folds up into such a, such a small little package. You can put this in the back seat of your car. You can put it in your, the trunk. And you know, wherever you go, if you go to an area you want to explore, you can just pop this out of the trunk and unfold it and, and you're off. So I feel like this could come in handy, especially for people who travel a lot. I feel like this bike would make a good mid-range commute bike. So me personally, I live about two to three miles from the BART station, which is our subway here train, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, this bike would be easy to hop on in the morning, ride the couple miles to the train, fold it up while you're on the train, get off the train, fold it up, you know. So I feel like this bike will be good for a commute like that, where maybe you don't have a ton of play, you know, you don't have to ride a ton of miles, but you know, your commute's 10 to 20 miles total. I think this would be fine. And if you work in an office, you can fold this BB up and Park it in your cubicle. Cruising on right around 16 miles an hour. Let's crank it up a little bit. Oh yeah, four is getting, you know. The four, I feel like maybe we're in a hurry. Maybe we're gonna miss that train after all. We need to speed up a little bit. Yeah, we're zipping along pretty good in four, 22 miles an hour. Oh man, five is, we're way late for that train. Yeah, this bike feels fairly quick though. I keep saying it, but you know, it's not the most powerful bike, but I feel like with the weight and smaller tires, 
it feels fairly quick. It feels nice for what it is. Something else I wanted to point out, this bike does have turn signals, but there's no indicators up here if your turn signal's on or off. So I did that whole part of the first part of this ride, I had my left turn signal on. So, you know, it'd be quite easy to just ride around and leave your turn signal on the whole time. However, not exactly the biggest turn signal, so I don't think uh, you're gonna bother too many people. While this bike feels fairly maneuverable, um, you do have to keep in mind that this bike is really low to the ground. So whenever your pedals are in the down position, you take a corner, you can see they can hit fairly easy. So it does feel fairly maneuverable, but being that it's so low to the ground, I feel like I'm always gonna hit something. So you have to be aware of that. Let's uh, go ahead and try a little bit of off-road here. Definitely don't think off-roading would be the strong point of the U3, but nevertheless, we'll try. So far, it's not a bad ride. I can feel some bumps, but it's not like jarring my bones loose or anything. Do this little downhill section here. All right, picking up some speed. Nice. One thing I'm noticing here, and I hope the camera's picking up, is this bike doesn't make much noise at all. So it has rear, front and rear plastic fenders. Plastic fenders are much quieter than metal. So if anything bounces off them, they don't make the loud clang noise like metal. But overall, I'm not hearing a bunch of stuff rattling around on this bike. All right guys, now it's time to do a brake test. Let's see how well the U3 can stop. Oh, not bad. You know, all in all, this has 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. They aren't the best. However, I feel like with the weight of this bike, if everything is smaller, the, uh, this bike stops well. And so far, these brakes aren't making any noise on me. So typically I definitely prefer, I always prefer hydraulic disc brakes, but in this implementation, these mechanical brakes feel fine. Almost forgot. Let's see how fast we can go on throttle only. So I'm in PAS5 right now. I'm getting up and going. This thing has a uh, accelerates fairly quick. It's not the most powerful bike, but it's not bad either. So we're at 25, throttle only, 26, 27. We're going, we're still going. Woo, 28. So it looks like we can get right about 28 miles an hour throttle only on the U3. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the hill climb portion of the test. This is a pretty steep hill here. I don't exactly know how steep because I'm not a dork, but we're gonna go ahead. We're already in a pedal assist five full power. I'm gonna see if we can make it up here. Now we're slowing down already, but we're still going. I'm gonna downshift. I'm in the easiest gear. Okay, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it about nine miles an hour. It's requiring input from my legs as well, but you know what, we're not. I'm not overexerting myself, that's for sure. It's a nice synergy between me and the bike. We are as one climbing this hill. Yeah, it's not having too hard of a time at all. Going around the final corner here, and we made it. I feel like you'll be able to conquer a year fair amount of hills on this without going completely crazy. For a folding bike, I feel this is completely adequate amount of climbing ability. All right guys, so we are at seven, we're about eight miles into the ride. We're showing three out of five battery bars. That's with a fair amount of climbing, some full throttle tests, riding around on pedal assist one through five. So I feel like still uh, it's possible to get a 20 mile range out of this bike without trying too awfully hard. Guys, I almost forgot. This bike has a horn. I feel this is adequately loud enough to alert people that, hey, we're coming up guys. We're on the U3, watch out. I did want to take a second to point out that the seat on this bike is rather comfortable. I rode, I tested a Vitalin V3, and the seat on that bike was really hard and extremely uncomfortable. This, is, in contrast, is a very cushy seat, and with the suspension seat post, so all in all, this bike gets a pass as far as the butt butt meter goes. So there you have it. That's the Vitalin U3. Some things I really like about this bike, well, for the price, I feel like it offers a lot. You get a folding capability, a nice LED color display. The three, 20 by three inch tires are nice. I feel like this bike is gonna be adequate for most people who are gonna to wanna to do light commuting. You can have this as a camping bike. This bike can fill the niche for a lot of things. It's great for somebody who's just getting into e-bikes, for instance. Some things I don't like about this bike, well, I mean, putting the price in the reference, okay, it's mechanical disc brakes. In this scenario, they're not making noise and they feel like they stopped this bike fine. 
The battery is not the biggest, but I think uh, realistically speaking, you can probably get 20 to 25 miles. For reference, I'm at 15 miles right now and I'm at two out of five bars. So overall, I do recommend this bike, especially for the price. So if you're interested in purchasing one, you can use the link in the description of this video. Use any coupon codes I'll have available. I'll put down there as well. And anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.